How many are born again? Yeah. Filled with the Spirit of the living God? Yeah. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah. Well, then let's let the Lord know it. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you to The Rock. If you're a first-time visitor, just raise your hand. First-time visitor, or this is maybe your second time here, raise your hand. Over here, over here, here, over here. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus and uh, pray that it's going to be a blessing for you because you've already blessed us by coming. Hallelujah. So, uh, and how many of this is your home church? You know it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Some of you aren't very excited about that, but praise God, someday it will happen. Hallelujah. Well, we still have lots of folks on vacation, but you know what? Jesus is not on vacation. He's right here in our midst to do great and mighty things, and we're going to praise his holy name. Amen? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Blessed Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you and praise you for this awesome and glorious day you've given us. And Father, just as the temperature is heating up, the enemy is heating up in its attack against us. But Lord God, you are the fire of the Most High God. And Lord, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We thank you and we praise you that you have given us the fire of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the precious blood of the Lamb. We thank you, Lord God, that you're the glory and the lifter of our heads. And so we celebrate you. Though the enemy rages, Lord God, we thank you that you are our sure foundation. You are our comforter. You're the rock on which we stand. You're our shield and our buckler. You're the safe harbor in the storm, Lord God. And so we just, again, want to lift up the name of Jesus for the precious and awesome work that he accomplished on the cross. Father, we cannot thank you enough for giving your son. And Jesus, we cannot glorify you enough for all that you've done for us. And Father, we thank you so much for sending the Holy Spirit to be our teacher and instructor in righteousness, to take everything that is the Lord's and declare it to us, that we might honor the fullness of the Godhead. And so we just give you praise and glory. We ask, Father, that you open our ears this morning, that we hear what your Spirit is saying, and that, Father, we apply it to our heart as we receive it by faith, that we would be a changed individual, that when we walk out of here, we would be different because we had an encounter with you. And so, Father, bring the visitation your visitation into our midst. The visitation, the power, and the habitation of the Holy Spirit bring the presence of the Anointed One into our midst. Rise up in us and flow through us as we give you all the praise and all the glory in the matchless name of Jesus and all the saints said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord another shout of praise. I've already had three people say, Pastor, did you move the chairs yesterday? Yeah, I rearranged them so no one would get comfortable. We don't like you sitting in the same chair all the time. We want you to feel the difference of the anointing over here, over here, over here, and over here. Amen? Amen. So how many you know where you sit doesn't matter as long as you're in his presence? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Well, we want you to listen up, watch the announcements, and see what's happening here at The Rock. Amen? Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Can someone uh, say that God is good? No, I said, say, God is good. good. There you go. I didn't say add anything to it. You know, if you add or subtract anything from the word, you're in trouble. Amen. So we want you to uh, realize how good our God is. Amen. You know, under the attack from the enemy, sometimes we lose sight of the goodness of God. And we lose sight that he's right there, ready to minister life to us. So no matter what you're going through, know this. God is with you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He's there to bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be good to you, be kind to you. And yes, the uh, college is starting. We're going to have the Tent of the Tabernacle. It's an in-depth study of uh, all the materials that was used, the colors they were. Everything is going to be described because every single item in the tabernacle tells the story of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. We're going to study how the 12 tribes were arranged around the tent of the tabernacle because it's about how to do spiritual warfare it's about how to stand in God and walk into the presence of the Lord so it's going to be a very in-depth study and then we're going to have deeper experiences with God we're going to be studying about hundred and fifty people who in history have had remarkable encounters with God and achieved remarkable remarkable uh, movements of God, started revivals, brought the presence of God in. We're going to study their lives and look and see what they did to pay that price to get into that position. Amen? So sign up for that and be a part and uh, go back to the back table and you can get the information. Also, don't forget to sign up for all the different things that are happening here. Uh, for those of you that are in our intersection prayer team, Tonight you're going out, you'll be at the corner of North Chester and James Road. And so you'll just meet out there and you'll split up to the four corners. And we're going to praise God there and we're going to command God's mercy over the city. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to implement the strategy that God has given us. So that's happening. Then Cam is Monday night for visitation and door-to-door ministry. And then on Tuesday night is intercessory prayer. And, of course, intercessory prayer going on through the morning, Tuesday through Friday, 9 to 10 a.m. Then on uh, Thursday night, our um, strike team goes out to the points where the principalities have portals into the city. And they're going to pray and uh, declare the word of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Saturday, our street team is going out to minister to the homeless. And our door-to-door ministry, again, is going to go out. So praise the name of the Lord. Get involved, sign up in the back, be a part of what God is doing. Amen? Amen. Amen. And what God is doing right now is he's wanting us to honor him with the tithe and the offering. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I want everybody that's going to give today, just lift your offering today. And I want you to make this declaration of your faith because when you bring an offering up here, it's not just I'm plunking some dollars into a basket. It's not I'm supporting the church. It is, I'm honoring the living God who has made a way for my life. I am honoring him with my substance. I'm bringing him praise and glory. And I'm believing in his word that says, he'll rebuke the devourer, he'll open up heaven, and pour out a blessing you cannot even contain at all. So you have to do it by faith, and you have to do it with great joy. Amen? Amen. So everybody put a smile on your face. Amen. Y'all look like I was pulling a tooth. And I do want to say to all of you, this is a church that believes if you can't give joyously, don't give it all. You need to take it and go give it somewhere else. Because you have to have a heart full of faith and a heart full of joy to plant seed in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So we're not here begging for your money. Keep it if you want it. But if you want to honor God and walk in his blessings, bring it to the Lord. Amen? Amen. So if you'll stand to your feet, we're going to have Banny. He's going to play for us today. It's going to be when the saints come marching in. So when you uh, come, I want to see some saints marching. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Hit it, Banny. Piano.
you guys look like when the saints go walking in. So everybody start marching in place. Amen. Hey, come on, march in place. You say, Pastor, this is stupid. Well, I'd rather be stupid for Jesus than stupid for the world. Hallelujah. We're supposed to have a skip in our walk. Amen. We're supposed to walk with our head lifted high because he is the glory and the lifter of our head. Amen. And his promises are true. So we need to celebrate that. Hallelujah. So let's extend our hands towards the tithes and offerings. Blessed Heavenly Father, we come before you. And we thank you, Lord God, that we are planting heavenly seed right now. We have brought the benefit from the works of our hands. And we are giving them to you as a spiritual gift of blessing to honor you, to lift up your holy name, to declare to all the world and all the powers of darkness that, Lord, you are our source. You are the power of life. You are our provider. And so we just thank you and praise you, Lord God, that is, as we have planted this on heavenly ground, in the heavenly vineyard of yours. That, Father, it's going to produce much life and abundance in each of us, the lost, the hurting, because you're going to multiply it so the needs of people can be met. And we receive it, Father, right now by faith in Jesus' mighty name. And all the church said... Amen. Give the Lord a shout. Remain standing. We're going to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, the rock. Y'all awake this morning? Oh, this is the day the Lord has made. He wants us to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, we give you praise, Lord. We lift our voices. We give you the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to your holy name this morning. We lift up holy hands in your presence, oh God. Oh, we give you praise and we magnify your name, oh God. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Amen. For the Lord is good Hallelujah. and his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Let the saints of the Lord say so. <laughs> well, I want to scream it out. How about you? I want to scream it out from every mountain top. Your goodness knows no bounds. Your goodness never stops. Your mercy follows me. Your kindness fills my life. Your love amazes me. And it makes me want to. And I see because you are good and I dance because you are good. You are good, you are good to me. Oh, yes, and I sing because you are good, and I dance because you are good. You are good, you are good, you are good to me. You are good, you are good to me. Nothing and no one comes anywhere close to you. The earth and oceans keep. Only reflect this truth And in my darkest night You shine as bright as day Your love amazes me His love amazes you this morning I sing because you are good And I dance because you are good And I shout because you are good You are good to me oh, yes. And I sing because you are good you are good and I shall because you are good. You are good. I'm going back to the top. I want to scream it out. I want to scream it out from every mountain top. Your goodness knows no bounds. Your goodness never stops. Your mercy follows me. Your kindness fills my You are good and I dance 
because you are good and I shout because you are good you are good to me and I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good you are good to me
that you every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord, Lord Jesus. We give you praise and we thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people this morning. <laughs> oh, that as we lift and exalt your name, that you run the aisles with us and that you shout and celebrate with us and that you fight against the powers and principalities for us. We thank you. Amen. <laughs> well, we are ascending into his presence Amen. on praise. And he inhabits the praises of his people. Amen.
love him. Lift your voice and begin to tell him how much you love him. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Oh, we thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for your presence, Lord. Oh, for in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Just take a deep breath in his presence. Just breathe in to the full capacity of your lungs and just breathe out. Thanks.
the comfort and the power and the freedom and the victory because you are our father you are Abba you are daddy Lord God and we magnify you right now thank you that we belong to you that we're your children called by your name hallelujah Lord we have been bought with the price, the precious blood of Jesus. And we just thank you and praise you and magnify and worship you now. Church, just lift your hands. Put your palms so you're ready to receive from heaven. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, because we're yours, we receive our inheritance in Christ. That inheritance to sit at your feet, to hear your voice, Lord God. To have your Holy Spirit write your word on the fleshly tablets of our heart. To feel your love and compassion for us, Lord God. We're not strangers in your midst. But we're your children sitting at your feet. Yes, Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. And in your presence, Lord God, there's healing. Receive your healing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Abba, Father, wants to touch you and heal you. 
for by the stripes of the Lamb you are made whole. Let the power and the wonder of the living God right now energize your body. Let him renew your mind and take away the depression and the despair. Let this awesome God that we call Abba Father minister life and life abundantly to you right now. Their shoulders being healed right now. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Shoulders being healed. There's hearts being healed and kidneys being healed right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, in his presence are his marvelous works. Father, we receive from you. We receive from you. Because we are yours and you are ours. We give you all the glory and all the honor. We give you all the praise, Lord God, for everything you've done in our lives. For what you have planned for us. And we thank you that, Father, today you have victory for all that call upon your name. You have victory, Lord God, in the midst of your children. And your children have victory in the midst of you. So we give you all the glory, all the honor. And all the saints said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Tell him you love him. Tell him right now. Receive your miracle. Receive what you need from God right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. There's no limit to what God has for you. Hallelujah. I said there's no limit for what God has for you. Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Abba Father. Abba Father. Hallelujah. Isn't it awesome to call the Creator God Abba Father? I said, isn't it awesome to call the Creator God Abba Father? Isn't it awesome to be in His presence and give glory to His name? Hallelujah. Turn on the lights. Glory to God. Oh, come on, church. Continue to give Him a shout of praise and worship Him. Worthy is the Lord God. Worthy is the Lord God. Hallelujah. Amen. He's the glory and the lifter of our heads. That means when all the pressure of hell and this earth is pushing you down, the greater force lifts your head in the midst of all the darkness and brings the light of the living God, breaks the chain of bondage and sets you free. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, give him one more great big shout of praise. Hallelujah. Well, why don't you greet one another and children, you are dismissed. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. We want to thank Chuck who filled in for Chad, part of our team, and praise the name of the Lord. Give all the team a great big hand. Amen. I said give the praise team a great big hand. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, singing and lifting praise to God is health to your body. But it's also a weapon in the arsenal of God. Amen. Praise is an arson is a weapon in the arsenal of God and worship is a weapon no enemy can tame. Did you hear me? So whatever the enemy was trying to do to strike blows against you this week, you need to say, Father, we just worshiped and we praised you, and the weapon has had its effect, and the enemy is rebuked out of my life, and I'm free. Amen? Oh, I'm glad so many of you are excited. See, if you don't say amen and preach it, you're going to run because that song said, I'm free to run. So if you're not going to praise the Lord, we're going to run. Hallelujah. Amen. Till everybody's praising the Lord. Well, praise God. We're going to talk about, we've been talking about the, the heart of worship and uh, what it is and what praise is and how it changes our lives. And today we're going to start looking at the different types of or positions of praise. And we're going to start with 
these things. Everybody hold up your hands. You see, these things are so powerful in the kingdom of God. They're not just what you pick up a pen with and write with. They're not what you take up a tool and undo a pipe with. These are instruments that literally will strike fear in the hearts of the enemy. These are instruments that will cause the enemy to flee. These are in, in, instruments that will bring the presence of God. They are instruments that will change your heart and your attitude towards God. They are also instruments that you might receive from God. Hallelujah. I'm glad, again, folks, you need to be more excited. I know it's 100 and the heat's zapping it out of you, but God is pushing it in you. So, hallelujah. So, 1 Timothy 2.8 says, I desire, therefore, that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath or doubting. He says, I want you to lift up holy hands. One of the first things we do, everybody lift up your hands. These are holy hands, not because of what you have done, because all of us have failed God and fallen short of the glory of God. But these hands are lifted up because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. These hands are lifted up because of the work of the cross and the power of His resurrection. And the scripture tells us that we should lift holy hands unto the living God. So the first thing you're doing is you're decreeing your victory over the enemy and the power of sin, and you are declaring the holiness of God in your life. Amen. So when we come into praise, there's a reason to lift our hands. You know, in the world, they lift their hands, and it don't mean a thing. They'll go to a concert, they'll lift their hands, and they do all these things, but they don't understand that they're absolutely doing nothing for themselves, but they're doing something against themselves because they're honoring the enemy rather than the living God. Amen? Amen. But God wants us to lift holy hands. So the first thing we have to recognize is that God has made us holy through the precious blood of the Lamb. Somebody say amen. amen. He made you holy. Folks, that means you have a fire of the living God because holiness comes by the purging of the fire of God. It comes by the power of the blood of the Lamb that washes your sins away. And there comes your source of praise and worship of God. That God did an eternal work inside this mortal body. I said God did an eternal work inside this mortal body. And that is worth shouting and praising God, no matter if he did anything else for us whatsoever. He wrote our names in heaven because we have holy hands because of the work of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that ought to put a shout in your mouth and a song of worship in your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Exodus 17, 11 through 13. And it was so, when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed, and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. It's a call of divine help, and it's also a cry to battle. I said it's a cry of divine help. They're in a battle, and he's crying. He's lifting his hands, asking for the living God to intercede on behalf of Israel. When you lift your hands, you're asking God to intercede for one he made holy. I'm going to go preach somewhere else where people get excited. I said, when you lift your hands, you're asking for divine intervention in your life. Hallelujah. When you lift your hands, you're declaring war on the enemy. Hallelujah. Because if God's going to intervene, the enemy has to be defeated. Thank you, Anna. I'll preach to you. Hallelujah. God wants us to understand that lifting these hands are far more than just an outward sign of God, I love you. It's a declaration of what you believe in your heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak His praise, His glory, His promises. Amen. Because your victory is in the covenant word that you might understand and know the promises of God and that it's not your battle, but it is the Lord's. 
And so when you make the battle cry, again, you're asking God to come in and do battle for you. For it's not yours, but mine, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. And again, folks, that ought, to, that ought to relieve a lot of pressure off of you. That you don't have to worry about the battle. All you have to do is recognize the living God as the one who fights the battle for you. To recognize that you can lift your hands and do a battle cry for the living God. And this, you don't even have to say a word. Just lifting your hands and believing that you are sending a message to God and the demons of hell that I'm calling upon the intervention of a living God that cannot be stopped. Hallelujah. We have to recognize why we do what we do. It's, it's not just, man, I like the music. It's I love my God. I love the work on the cross and the power of the resurrection. I love what my God is doing as he intervenes in my life. I'm excited that no matter what the enemy throws at me, my God is able to deflect it so it brings no harm to me. My God is able to stop it. He's able to quench it. Hallelujah. He's able to make me succeed even when I'm outnumbered 30,000 to one. Hallelujah. When the odds are totally against you, when it looks like there's no way for you to make it, when the doctor's report says you're not going to live, get the family together, I want you to know, I've been in the hospital uh, many times over 40 years with the doctor saying, get everybody together. He has less or she has less than a few hours to live. And right there, the holy cry, the lifting up of hands, the praising of the living God, and all of a sudden, God would come in and intervene in that situation, and that person would come up out of that bed made whole by the power of the living God. We serve a God of impossibilities. We serve a God that makes all things possible to him that believeth. Hallelujah. But you got you to gotta do what God tells us to do. You can't let what your eyes are seeing, what your body is feeling, what your emotions are feeling, tell you that God is not there or tell you that it is impossible to have the answer that you want. But in the positions of praise, we make a declaration to God. You see, it's hard to praise God with your head bowed and your hands down, burdened under all the oppressiveness of the enemy. It becomes impossible to praise God until you lift your head and set your eyes upon Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Till you set your eyes upon a living God that died and rose again and lives forevermore. Till you, till you start to think, God made me one of his holy children. Though I am not holy in my flesh, my spirit is holy. My mind is being renewed, and I'm putting on Christ in the outer man. There's a work going on inside of me, and it's all for the glory of my God, all for the glory of my Savior. Amen. Amen. I've told you guys this a million times. The world cheers everything else. They shout, they, they stand, they fall down, they do all types of things for all kinds of worldly things. And so many churches sit quiet and wonder where their God is at. Sit silent and do not lift their hands. Will not clap their hands in honor of God. And yet God's Word is filled from Genesis to Revelation 4,436 times. Raise your hands, clap your hands, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. In the Word of God, it says when we get to heaven, what are we going to be doing in heaven? Singing, praising, bowing down, lifting holy hands. It's going to be the noisiest place you've ever been in. I said last week, if you don't like a loud church, you won't like heaven. Because the Word describes heaven as active and full of praise and full of worship. Lightning and thunder is coming off of the throne of God. Hallelujah. 
So when Moses' hands were held up, Israel began to win. When you lift your hands because you are like Moses, you are a child of the living God. You are like a leader because we are to all rise up into a leadership position, leading our family, our friends, our relatives, leading brothers and sisters in the Lord. When we lift our hands, the enemy gets defeated, and the church of the living God starts to see victory in the midst of it. That's when the lame are going to walk, the blind are going to see, the deaf are going to hear. That's when the supernatural miracles of God begin to happen, when the church begins to do what it was designed to do. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, church. Praise the name of the Lord. Amalek, the name Amalek stands for evil and, and, and oppressive power. So when you're not praising God, oppressive power can come against you. How many have ever been oppressed? How many have been depressed? How many have just been pressed? <laughs> Hallelujah. How many ever got your fingers caught in the door and they got pressed? How many have said something when that happened? Well, when the enemy is pressing on you, you should be saying something. Not ouch. Not oh my goodness. Not Jesus, help me. Should be Lord God, I magnify the name of the Lord God most high. Because the enemy gets defeated in your shout of praise. Amen. You can see it from Genesis to Revelation. You can especially see it in the Old Testament as men began to shout the praises of God and what God did to defend Israel. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So the raising of hands is the declaration that I have received the gift of eternal salvation, the holiness of God. It is to declare, God, I am dependent upon your divine intervention, and I know it is coming. It is a battle cry. Father, do battle for me and give me the strength to stand and withstand all the fiery darts of the enemy. It is a declaration that says that God has prepared something in me. I want you to look at Psalms 144.1. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Yes. Folks, you and I are not out fighting someone in the physical. We are fighting principalities, powers, rulers of spiritual wickedness in high places. He's talking about these hands also are destined and trained for warfare in the kingdom of our God. So that is warfare, folks. It is part of the plan of God. That's why he gave you hands, not only to take care of his garden, but to bring the power of a God that cannot be defeated, of a God that loves you so much he sent his only begotten son, of a God that deposited inside of you the power and the wonder of the Holy Spirit. It is to declare, God, I am a soldier in your kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The raisings of the palms up like this is a position of surrendering or offering. Psalms 28, 2, hear the voice of my supplications when I cry to you for help, when I lift my hands toward your holy sanctuary. This is literally talking about when you study it, lifting holy hands in the sanctuary for God's provision to flow into your hands because you did not surrender to the enemy, but you surrendered to the promise of the living God. You surrendered to the quickening of his word. You surrendered to the quickening of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I am in position to receive my promise from the living God. I mean, you know, you need to be in position to get the flow. You know, if you want a shower, standing out the shower is not the position to get washed. How I many you know you got to step into the shower and you got to get under the shower head? Hallelujah. The same thing is true in the Spirit of God is that if you want God to flow, that's why so many people come to church and people will walk out and say, I felt the presence of the Lord, and others will walk out and say, I didn't feel nothing because you were outside the shower. 
You were in the room, but outside the shower. But if you want to feel it, position yourself in praise and worship. When we're singing about all the things that God has done for us, instead of lifting like this, because we're not asking for help, we're asking for His provision as we surrender to the truth of a God that made a way for us when there was no way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants us to walk in this. He wants us in our supplications. And folks, how many of you know he says in Philippians, in prayers and supplications and thanksgiving? Prayer is talking your request. Supplication is I believe what I just asked for. So I turn my hands from this to this. And I begin to give you thanksgiving. Praise the name of the Lord. These hands are are made and created by God. Just like His hand provides warfare for you, protection for you, it provides provision for you. That's why Jesus' hands were nailed to the cross. That's why He went to the cross. When we get to feet, you'll understand the cross more powerfully than you ever have, I believe, in your entire life. When you understand that He was crowned with the crown of thorns where the soul is and where the soul still gave the Father praise and worship, where His hands were, which were the instruments of receiving from God and declaring His greatness, and His feet were given that He might bring the Word to the world and set the captives free. When we look at the 36 positions of praise and worship, you're going to understand the cross backwards and forwards, upside down. You're going to understand the work of Jesus Christ, and you're You're going to have a shout in your heart. You're going to have a song inside of you. You're going to give God worship, and you're going to give Him higher praise. Hallelujah. Amen. In Philippians 4, 6, the scripture I just referenced, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Hallelujah. My lifting of my hands to have God intervene. That's a prayer of asking, Father, according to thy word, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Thank you, Father. I receive my healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you make a way for me when there seems to be no way. Thank you, Father, my eyes behold the way, for you have given and ordered my steps. Hallelujah. For every promise of God, there's scriptures about what you receive from that promise. Did you hear me? And so you're giving him praise for what he did, then you're honoring him, receiving in faith what he has given you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, Let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. So he says, with prayers, the petition for his intervention, according to his word, the supplication of receiving, you'll receive the peace that passes all understanding, and you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt That which you have brought to him is now yours. But some people just bring the prayers, but they never bring the supplication. You enter his gates with thanksgiving. You enter his courts with praise. Hallelujah. You enter his throne room that you might receive mercy, that you might obtain grace in your time of need. When I go in with God's mercy... I'm going in saying your word is true and I stand upon that which you have provided for me. His grace is now I can receive it. Now I can receive what heaven has provided for me. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The waving of lifting hands. I mean, again, I try to get you to do this, folks. Everybody raise your hands and wave. You're not saying hi. You're not trying to guide an airplane at the airport. The waving of your hands is the acknowledgement of His presence. 
It means you know he is with you. How many of you know some days you don't feel like God is with you? How many of you have ever had a day like that? I want to tell you what, when you feel that, you need to just start doing this. And tell your mind, I acknowledge my God is with me. And if my God is with me, he is for me. And if he is for me, who can be against me? It's acknowledgement of his presence. It's acknowledgement of his authority and power to set you free. Folks, how many of you know when you uh, need uh, a tooth pulled, you don't go to an ankle doctor? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you need your car fixed, you don't pull it into the car wash. <laughs> you got to go to the one that has the ability, the knowledge, the authority to fix what you need fixed. This is a declaration that I acknowledge your authority and power in my life to fix all that the enemy has destroyed. And when you start doing this, you're also saying out of Hebrews chapter 10, I recognize the thief and that he stole my goods. And now that I have caught him, he must repay me seven times what he stole from me. It is a declaration of war also because you're declaring God's promises in your life. Oh, come on, church. Some people come into church. You know, we used to belong to a church, my wife and I, when we first got married. If you said amen, everybody in the entire church would turn and look at you. And if you said it again, they'd ask you to leave. The men's choir would get up and sing and it would be powerful and awesome. And if you went this way, again, everybody would look at you. So people come to church in a Pentecostal church. And they say, well, I don't, I, I don't want to raise my hand. I'll think what people think about me. I'd rather have people looking at me because I'm raising my hands with them than people looking at me telling me to shut up and be quiet. So you being quiet draws more attention than you joining the crowd. It declares that we are his soldiers because under his authority he has called us to serve him. You know what a soldier is? It's a sold out servant. A servant who loves God so much that they'll give anything for their master. Whatever the master requires, they say, here am I, send me. You see, a soldier is not someone who carries a, a rifle or a bayonet or hang grenades. We carry the word of the living God. We call, carry the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. We carry prophecy inside of us. We carry the life of God to give to those who are under siege. A soldier just goes and delivers those that are in battle. A soldier is one who praises the Lord and the enemy has to back off. Hallelujah. I've shared this a couple of times, but in World War II when my father was uh, fighting in, in Europe, there was a heavy heavy gunfire coming from both sides. And there was a distance of about 50 yards between each group of people. And he said, all of a sudden in the distance we could hear the Scottish army arriving. They were playing their bagpipes. And he said, they just kept getting closer and closer and closer until we saw them turn onto the battlefield. They were walking between the Germans and the Allies. The Germans quit shooting, the Allies quit shooting, and the Scottish bagpipers kept on playing and marched through the entire battlefield until they were done playing, and then they pulled up their arms and the battle started again. You know what they were declaring? 
They were declaring, we're under the protection. We're under the guidance. We're under the power of our God. Because they were mostly Catholic, but they did believe in Jesus. But they were saying something that they would walk. When they knew the arms were drawn, the, the bullets were loaded, and they were flying in the air before their arrival. I want you to know, folks, that's what happened to Jehoshaphat and the army of Israel when three armies gathered around them and God said, the battle's not yours, but it's mine, saith the Lord. Send out the choir boys singing, praise ye the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And it struck confusion in all the armies and they struck themselves until the last man died. And Israel didn't have to raise a sword, throw a spear, bring out an arrow. They didn't have to fight whatsoever. But yet they did fight. They fought with praise. They fought with supplication, His mercy. And they received the peace of the living God because they watched God deliver them from all the armies that was raised against them. They received the peace. That's what it's talking about in Philippians. They received the peace because they could see the hand of God moving. Oh, hallelujah, church. Glory to the Lord. The waving of the hands declares this. Exodus 29, 19 through 28. When you read this, it's about Aaron and, and his sons, and they're preparing an offering, and, and the, the heart and the different pieces were placed in Aaron's hands. And when he got it, he would wave it before the Lord. Then he would put it on the fire to bring the presence and the power of God. If you read this whole thing, it's an amazing account of how God uses the wave offering, which is us. We are now the offering of the Lord. I, Romans 12, 1 and 2. My brethren, present yourselves by the mercy of God. Amen. Amen. An offering unto God which is your reasonable service. Hallelujah. And you can prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Present yourself a living sacrifice, a living offering to God. Here you're declaring, I'm an offering. I'll go to war, I'll go to battle, and I'll lay my life down for you, Lord Jesus. I am the sweet-smelling offering. Guess what comes next? The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Spirit then descends and it consumes your offering. How many want to be consumed by the fire of the living God and revival bust out in the midst of your soul? Well, I thought that would last a lot longer than that. Hallelujah. Folks, when we become the living offering, we lay our lives down as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And you know you're holy and acceptable because He made you holy. That's why you lift holy hands. You giving God a holy sacrifice of yourself that His work did inside of you. You giving it to God God brings the fire. It burns up all the dross. And he receives the sweet-smelling incense of your praise and of your worship. Then God empowers. Then God moves. Then God delivers. Then God sets free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of them, verse 24 says, You shall put all these in the hands of Aaron, in the hands of his son, and you shall wave them as a wave offering before the Lord. When you study the wave offering, the breast of the bird is also offered, which is out of the peace offering, which comes back to Philippians with prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, you shall receive the peace that passes all understanding. It's part of the heave offering, bringing all that you have unto God, and God then restores and multiplies and becomes El Shaddai, the God of more than enough in your life. 
The wave offering, folks, you're literally saying, I'm surrendering to the authority, the power of the living God. I'm a soldier, a servant in your kingdom, and I am receiving the peace that passes all understanding, guarding my heart and my mind. I'm giving myself as a living sacrifice. And Lord God, you are beautifying this sacrifice, this offering, with the beauty of your holiness, with the power of your hands, with the creativity of your mind. Everything is mine, for I I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm made to receive all this from God. You're made to receive all this from the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, church. He wants you to receive that fire. And then the fourth position of the hands is... Hallelujah. Clapping of hands. Hallelujah. Signifies and recognized him as the sovereign Lord, the ruler of the universe, and the Savior. Clapping your hands says you are the Lord, you are the God of the universe. The word says at the clapping of the hands, the enemy flees. He's sovereign Lord. He's already put his will out for you. You can know what his will is. Sovereign doesn't mean God will do what he wants to when he wants to. It means I've already laid out the plan and I'll do exactly as it says. People use that word sovereign. God's sovereign God. You know, he can heal if he wants or he cannot or he can do this. God already put out what his sovereign will is. It's called the Old and New Testament. It's called the covenant of promise. Hallelujah. There's no variance or shadow of change in him. So when we clap our hands and we recognize him as sovereign Lord, we recognize him as the ruler of the universe and our Savior, you're declaring your victory in Christ Jesus. You know, one of the greatest things the body of Christ needs to learn is that you're a victor and not a victim. Too many people coming to church feeling victimized. I'm under attack with sickness and disease. I'm under attack with financial lack. I'm under attack in my marriage. I'm under attack in this area and that area. You need to quit saying you're under attack and you need to start saying, I'm more than a conqueror in healing and power. I'm more than a conqueror in my finances. I'm an overcomer through the living God, hallelujah. I'm going to proclaim his will. I'm going to proclaim his word. And I refuse to declare what the enemy is doing against me. We need to come in, that's why I've been telling you, we need to, when we come in that door, when you get out of your car door, there ought to be a shout in your heart and in your mouth. There ought to be a dance as you're coming in. There ought to be some clapping. There ought to be some waving. There ought to be something going on because you're coming into the house of the Lord. And that's why the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm coming running into the house of the Lord. I'm coming jumping into the house of the Lord. That's right, Pastor. That's right, I believe in that. Well, let your face show it. Hallelujah. Psalms 147, uh, Psalms 47, 1. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. triumph. That means you recognize you already won. I said, you recognize you already won. The battle's not even over, but you know you've already won. When I used to run track and cross country, if a guy was ahead of me, I could tell if I was going to catch him by how he positioned his arms. If his arms were loose and he was running with his arms slightly dropped, he was limber, he was fresh, he was still going to be able to pour it on. 
But if his arms got tight and he was running more like this, I knew I can take that dude because he's tightening up and he will not be able to sprint when it's time. I knew I was going to win before I ever won. I also knew when I was going to lose before I ever lost. Because if I felt my arms tightening up, I'd go, oh, Lord. But when you're fighting the enemy, you can recognize the hand and the power and the glory and the presence of God and that he's moving on your behalf. So even before the victory is literally made manifest, the victory has been made manifest in here because through the eyes of faith, Jesus has finished it. Hallelujah. I can see my victory before I get it. But once I can see it, I know I have it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You may not see it out here, but you see it here. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reuben, your heart and your kidneys, they're working perfectly in the name of Jesus. There'll be no more swelling, retaining of water. You do not have congestive heart failure. Your heart is working perfectly, and you are whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. Frank, where's Gloria? Gloria. No, Lopez, there you are, Gloria. The, the word of the Lord says unto you, you're going to get a report very soon that everything is back to normal, that everything is functioning perfectly, and your husband is coming home, and as you declared out of your mouth this morning, I'm going to bring him to church again. I want you to know you're not going to bring him again. You're going to bring him again and again and again and again because God has healed his body. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Sam and Maud, those dorms are built in the name of Jesus. Supernatural provision is coming. You're going to see checks being written like you've never seen before. And those girls are going to be protected from the rape and everything else they're suffering at the school that you sponsor and raise up in Zambia. I want you to know God has met the need. It's already declared. It's already done. So see it, receive it, and declare and call them and say, start getting all the quotes to build and finish it off because it's coming to pass in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. You know that you're scaring the devil out of Oildale right now? Hallelujah. The devil don't know what to, what's going on. And if any of you brought a demon in with you, he's already gone. Isaiah 55, 12, for you shall go out with joy. Are you getting ready to go out with joy? There's some men in here that have prostate problems. It's enlarged and it's causing a problem in your urination. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, raise your hand if you have that and receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Prostate, you will shrink, you will be normal, and there will be no blockage in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for delivering delivering your men who will stand and raise their hands to the living God and wave them for their victory right now. Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. You shall go out in joy led by peace and led by the voice of God. Hallelujah. My children know my voice. Why do so many children say, what are you saying? 
God says through praise and through worship, through the lifting of your hands, through the clapping of your hands, you're going to hear the voice of God like never before. You want to hear God's voice? God, I give you glory. I praise you. I magnify you, Lord God. I give you the shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hearing will come. It's a guarantee from God that you'll know his voice. Hallelujah. The mountains and the hills shall break forth with singing before you. That means all of creation starts to join in your victory song. Which means creation will give up its wealth to you. Didn't God create the earth to supply man all of his need? He said, you're going to govern and it shall supply all of your needs, your food, your clothing. If you ain't got the hills and the mountains singing for you, that may be why you're a little lack or slack in what you need. Thank you. They're going to break forth with song. They're going to become productive. Everything you put your hand to will begin to provide for you. All the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The word says, if my children will not praise me, the rocks will cry out. Here it says that when we're praising the Lord, magnifying the Lord, we're clapping our hands, the trees begin to clap because they know something. The day of the sons and daughters of God has come and the curse is being broken off of them. Hallelujah! That's just four things you can do with your hand. There's more in the word. There's kneeling with hands raised. There's falling prostrate with hands cupped underneath you. There is the salute to the living God. There is so many. We're going we're gonna to look at all 36 things you can do with your feet, with your waist, with your head, your neck, your shoulders. Glory to God. Things you can do in your bed, on your bed, off your bed. God's going to turn some couch potatoes into french fries. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can't you feel the stirring of the living God? Yeah. Folks, you're, spo you're supposed to be stirred up all day long. Yeah. Stirred up, not shaken. stirred up. We're not supposed to be shaking over what's going around, for God says we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Everything that is not of Him will be shaken. But we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Hebrews chapter 12. Hallelujah. But we are to be stirred up. He says, stir up the gift within you. What is the most precious gift you have? Not the Holy Spirit gifts, the gift of Jesus Christ. The gift of Him being your Lord. The gift of Him being sovereign in your life. The gift of His grace. The gift of His mercy. Stir up Christ inside of you and let Him begin to flow so it's no longer you that liveth, but Christ that liveth in you. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Hosanna, Hosanna. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Praise Him, praise Him. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. You got it? Come on, stand to your feet and let's praise Him. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Praise Him, praise Him. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. I don't hear your voices. 
I'm not a praise and worship leader, so I don't sing good, and I probably got you all off beat. But you still should be able to praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, folks, just think about this. And then another position of praise. Marching against the gates of hell. You see, people will say, no, church is why? Church, that, you know, that's just flesh. No, it's not. It's making a decree that the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hear the sound of the army of the Lord. I said, I hear the sound of the army of the Lord. It's the sound of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some of you get your freedom right now. Get your healing. Get your deliverance right now. Get the presence of God moving in your life. See, I used to sit in church like this. And I would go home after being in a church like this. And I'd say, I was at the zoo. Everybody there was crazy. They were marching and laughing and jumping and leaping. They were talking in some language. I don't know what it was. Thought I was in a Russian church. And then one day, the Holy Ghost got on me. And when it started, I started. And I started dancing when they started dancing. And I started shouting when they started shouting. And all of a sudden, my life began to change. And I found victory in Christ. The power of God to set me free from depression and despair and fear and wondering made me steadfast and immovable in my God. Because now I got something to shout about. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, oh, we thank you, Lord God, that, Father, we can adore you not only with the words of our mouth, but the expression of our hands. We can adore you, and you can see your children praise you openly, unashamedly, not intimidated by other people, but freely shouting to you, just as men have shouted unto kings and royalty and artists and singers, you see us shouting unto you, the sovereign Lord, my Savior, my God, my King. And you are well pleased, Lord God, and you inhabit this kind of praise. And when you inhabit, you melt the bonds of wickedness. You break the chains of bondage, and your children go free in the mighty name of Jesus. I said, in the mighty name of Jesus. We lift our hands in adoration of you, thanking you that you have made us holy by the precious blood of the Lamb. We lift our hands in a divine call unto you to minister your word, the word of life, as we declare it, as we to call upon you. Thank you, Father, that you enter the battle, for the battle is not ours, but it is yours, saith the Lord. Thank you, Father, that we turn our hands upward, our palms upward, as a sovereign surrender to you and your word. And let it be as according to thy word in our lives, Lord God. We receive the promises of the covenant. We receive the power and authority that we can walk in through Christ Jesus. We recognize you. We praise you. We worship you. We bow down before you. We thank you that we receive the peace, Father, that is beyond all understanding, able to guard our hearts and our minds. We thank you, Father, that we turn our hands and begin to wave them, and we recognize our victory in Christ, and that, Lord God, you are our God, and we present ourselves as a living sacrifice unto you, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. We thank you, and we give you glory, 
And Father, we clap our hands. We shout for joy. We proclaim and receive our victory. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Well, I hope you go out of here excited. Hope you go out of here lifted up. I hope you, if, you, if you didn't receive anything from this message, I hope you go out ticked off. Because God can use someone that's ticked off. You know how? When you're ticked off, he can talk to you. When you're lukewarm, he can't. He'd rather have you be cold and turned off and mad than to be lukewarm and say, I didn't understand, it don't matter to me. Amen, as I've always told you, either get, get encouraged, excited, or get ticked off when you come to church. But don't just be that casual Christian. God bless you. Go in the peace, the grace, the mercy of God. Amen.